Hey everybody, it's your girl Charlotte Van Horn with Black Expats in Panama. And you know, it has been brought to my attention that I really haven't, you know, talking to talk to you guys in a while. You know, I get to meet quite a few of you at um the Black Expat um meetups and things like that. Um we do the Zoom calls every now and then, but you know, besides that, I haven't really just reached out and spoken to everyone. And so I wanted to do that. Um, I bring you greetings from Crazy Florida. Okay, um, I'm spending a few days out here with uh, my daughter and her family. And um, it's just amazing to me that no one is wearing masks. It is such a contrast from you know, what we experience in um, what we experience in Panama, even what we experience in Virginia. This is like, I haven't seen this yet. You know, to be in a store and like, you know, you see about uh, 20 people. I was in the CVS. I seen about 20 people in the CVS at the same time and me and another person and the person behind the counter was the only people that I saw wearing masks. So that was like a little bit different. And, you know, it was one of those things too that um, just made me happy that I have another place to call home uh, with regard to, um, you know, Panama. And the other thing that I wanted to mention was that I've recently uh, traveled to Belize and I'm going to share some photos with you all of um, the trip that we did to Belize. Uh, Belize. Um, this is a project that I do called We Travel, We Connect. And um, of course, I, uh, I do that in conjunction with uh, my friend and business partner, Chris Tapu of ITA Global. We went to Belize. Uh, we saw Belize in a way that probably so many people have never seen Belize. You know, we go on these vacations and we don't really think about connecting to the culture, which is what I am all about. We travel, we connect, right? So we went to Belize and instead of just doing all the touristy zip lining and um, stuff like that, we make a point to connect with the culture before we leave. We were there during their first emancipation, their first official holiday uh, Emancipation Day, and we visited Dangri Dangriga, and um, we spent time with the Girafunu, Girafunu um, people of Belize, and we went to their museum. Um, the guy that created the museum gave us a home cooked meal. It was just amazing. The drumming, and I think y'all know I came on and said, you know what, Panama, I love y'all, but Belize got you on the drummer. Belize drumming was absolutely amazing. And the thing too is that uh, when you go to different places and you see how our histories um, collide and parallel and how, you know, how much more we have in common with um, Black people over the world than we have, um, than not. And so one of the things, though, is that when I started Black Expats in Panama, you know, it was just because I was an expat in Panama and I was kind of looking to connect with, um, with you know, other Black expats, with, um, you know, connect to the culture of the country, Panama City area um, for me. And this thing just kind of blossomed, y'all. When I say that God has just had a divine plan for this and um, the next step I take is the next step he tells me to take, period, okay? But I hadn't really been lately to other countries. You know, I spent the whole year grounded in the United States during um, COVID. So Belize was my first trip outside of the country. And what was so amazing to me, now that we're doing the Black Expats and we're showing Panama as a, a great place um, to live, I kind of saw this trip differently. You know, I, I recognize that, well, Belize is a very beautiful place. It is definitely not a place for me as far as to live. It's very sleepy. It seems very sleepy. Um, it's not, you know, it's not very developed. I think they said it's one of the most underdeveloped places. And for some people that's attractive and that's fine, but not for me. I, I need a little bit more than that. Um, we visited, um, Hopkins, Dangriga, um, and then, uh, um, the team, we skipped on to other areas to look at possible places for other tour groups to come. I visited San Pedro. 
and two other islands. I can't quite remember the names right now, but you know, the infrastructure is not there. Oh, we went to Placentia. Um, the infrastructure is not there though. The the roads and everything is just not where I would need it to be. Even in Placentia, when the tour guide said that the closest hospital was 70 miles away. You know, those are things that we need to consider when we are um, making, when we are relocating. So if you're thinking about uh, relocating to Panama and you haven't looked at some of these other countries, go and look at some other countries if you can, just to be able to compare for yourself um, whether or not, you know, what the, what the differences are. And at the end of the day, I came away feeling extremely happy that Panama is where I've landed as far as me being an expat. Now, I look forward to looking at other countries um, from the same perspective, but as of right now, I am I'm extremely happy that this is, is where I've landed. Not necessarily where I chose because, you know, some of you know my husband is Panamanian, so, you know, this was where he wanted to be, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm totally happy um, to be here. So I wanted to mention that. The other thing I wanted to update you on is the directory. And, you know, I'm feeling some kind of way uh, about the directory because I don't like being over time when I say I'm going to do something. If I say I'm going to do something, I, I want to do it, period, you know, and do it on time. But you know what? Doing it and doing it in excellence is two different things. And quite frankly, I just don't really feel that the directory is up to what I would call an excellent standard at this moment. So as soon as we can make those tweaks and adjustments, and in the meantime, you can still add people um, to the directory because eventually that is going to be the only way that you can refer businesses to Black expats in Panama. It's going to be through the directory. So I'm going to put the link down here again. And again, if you've had good um, service from people, uh, from businesses in, in Panama or abroad that are serving, you know, expats, please do add them into this directory because it lets people know it's a trusted business directory and it lets people know that they you've had a good experience with them and it helps them. And if they're doing good business, we need to, uh, uh, we need to applaud them and support them. And this is not just for Black-owned business. Of course, we want to support Black-owned business whenever possible, but it's for other businesses as well, you know, and I feel that, you know, in a way we have to be careful with bringing some of um, some of our United States ways to Panama. And I'm very, very conscious of that. Um, and, you know, I've had, you know, some people on the page say, well, that's not a black owned business. And, you know, why are we supporting this? And why are we supporting that? First of all, if there's anything about this page that, you know, you don't like, you have a question about or a concern about, the first thing you can do is address me. Um, I can tell you anything. Um, the meetups, the next meetups that we have scheduled is the Caribbean Day on September 3rd and the city to sand on September 9th. As of this recording, we got about three tickets left for the um, city to sand, um, the Coronado meetup at the country club out there. Um, and so if you, wanna, if you wanna get with that, please do it right away. Um, oh, the resident celebration. What I think the resident celebration is gonna be, is gonna be like, um, I'm thinking January and June. So you have plenty of time if you've received your residence uh, recently or will be receiving it between now and January, which will be the first one that we do. Continue to send um, your emails to blackexpatsinpanama at gmail and just in the uh, in the in the um, in the subject line, just put a uh, residence residency celebration. Okay, I think that's what I said. Residency celebration, and then we'll tag it that you know that we received it, and then when we get ready, we'll we'll get in touch with you so that you can be involved in the celebration. And so, like I said, that's exciting because. What we're doing is a big deal and we want to celebrate it. We want to, we are our ancestors wildest dream baby when they couldn't walk across the street and not fear for their lives, how we can decide that we're going to live in another country, you know, is just absolutely huge. And I know that they are very proud of us and um, they would definitely want us to share that. And we definitely want to share that 
that ability with our children and our grandchildren. With regard to um, postings and comments on the page, I need y'all to be my eyes and ears, okay? Um, me and the other admins need you to be our eyes and ears. If there are people that are just constantly soliciting, um, you know, overboard in the in the um, comments and things like that, let us know. If there are people sliding in your inbox, you know, with some inappropriate mess, let us know because we will address the situation right away, okay? That's not what we're going to do. So there are some areas that feel like they're not represented. And I guess, you know, that's just something we'll have to work on for those areas that, you know, if you have black expats in your areas and you're way outside of the, um, of the Panama City area, you know, Talk to me. Let me know what your thoughts are. You know, if you'd like to do a meetup, you know, what um, it would be and whether or not, you know, you, you know, and I can let you know whether or not black expats in Panama can be your, um, you, know, you know, basically support you, support you in that. Um, and so I think that is all I have at this time. I know that there are some big announcements coming down the pike um, for me that I'm going to share with you when the time is right. Um, I want to um, just thank the people who have worked with us to be able to expand from a group page to, you know, an LLC to, you know, connecting people with veteran, uh, vet connecting veterans. Um, with help and just connecting people as they come. And we want to continue to provide great value to each and every person who is a part of this um, group. And so um, we thank you. We thank you for your love and support. And um, we're always here and always open to hear any new ideas that you have, any suggestions that you have that will bring value to the group and make it better, just, you know, send me a message and then we'll go uh, from there. You know, somebody was telling me, we're at almost about 3,000 members now. Can you believe this? We're almost, almost about 3,000 now. So I, I got to tell you that sometimes it gets a little... Um, challenging, you know, trying to keep up with everything and, um, you, you know, it's just, it, it's just a lot, but I'll tell you what, I'm committed to it and I'll do my very best. Um, sometimes I know it may take a little while for people to get in, um, but we're working on that too, but we really do take the time to screen the profiles of people who want to come in and that's just to keep the, so that the group can continue to be positive. You know, if we see too much negative from you or anybody there, we will remove you from the group, okay? And so sometimes you could just tell by the profiles that this is probably not going to be somebody that needs to be in our group. And so we don't accept them um, because we are trying to keep this equality group for all. So with that said, I just wanted to say I love you guys and I will be back in Panama soon and um, have a great day. Take care of yourselves. Bye.